Greetings, friends. Jawless Paul here. We're playing Pyre again. And uh, we've got this, this save profile here. We've, we've, released, we've released one character into, into the Commonwealth. And uh, that, that person was Edwin. And so now we are moving on. And we're going to see who we release next, I guess. I'm not really sure what to expect here. This is, this is going to be great. Okay, Volfred. Mm. Following Hedwin's liberation, you find Volfred smoking at his pipe, his eyes averted. He looks up and smiles as you approach. Now, maybe we've had this conversation before? Oh, yes. Hello, my boy. Excellent work back there. Thank you for your perseverance. Though, I was just reflecting on how very fortunate I've been in all of this. Not just me, but really all of us who have had a chance to stand with Hedwin here. Ours is admittedly a somewhat desperate plan. It was, a, it was vital to me, should the night wings rise again, that it be under proper care and guidance. I was just thinking how well Hedwin served in that capacity. Whatever it is to be the outcome of all this, no doubt his presence shall be missed. My agents and I, we were unsure of him. Okay, yeah, so we have read this. Um, They've got a feeling. We've, we've read all that. You and Volfred speak more of Hedwin for now. And there it is. Okay. Um, so we continue on, on our journey. Uh, and I'm excited to see what comes next. Good morning, my boy. The place I noted earlier, let me illuminate the way. The Moonlight Alcove, a small landing on the dark side of the Sacred Mountain. We, we await our psych next cycle of the rites here. Okay. Sick. That looks like a mask there. That. Uh, oh, hey, look! And that's, uh, looks like a serpent with a mask on. Wolfred leads all of you into a calm and quiet clearing, tucked away inside one of the mountain's hidden folds. All about, you see a variety of strange items and equipment. Bide your time. Oh, there's someone to talk to. You find Volfred seemingly lost in thought, then he turns to you. Greetings, reader. This wagon and I, we've many memories together, and I could not help reliving some of them just now. I suppose some aspects of my past may be of relevance to you, given your role. If there is something that you wish to know, you need but ask. Ooh. Um, what did he do to earn his sentence? Why the Nightwings disbanded? How he knows the lone minstrel? Let's see. How do you earn a sentence? Your sentence. You asked Wolfred about his past in the Commonwealth and how it is he came to be in the downside. How very forward of you, my boy. Most whom I have met during my travels here have been reluctant to approach the subject of one's history before one's exile. Nonetheless, I am happy to tell you. As a reader, I assume you are familiar with the stamping press. I owned an operating one. An operated one. The legal adventure allowed written materials to be published at an extraordinary rate. Oh, nice. I took issue with the Commonwealth, the ban on literacy, the interminable wars against the high-wing remnants. I spread the truth about it all with my machine. Okay. Under pseudonym, of course. Still, I knew I was putting myself at risk, and sure enough, my stamping press was eventually discovered and burned to the ground. I, however, managed to elude capture for a while, but not for long enough. Here in the downside, I chanced upon the Nightwings, who were searching for a reader, in that respect, I, my past, I think, is similar to yours. Anyway, that is the long and the short of it. Now then, was there anything else? Uh, why did the Nightwings disband? You express interest in knowing more of how the Nightwings came to be here and Wolfred's past connection to the group. I have been connected to the Nightwings almost since the beginning of my days in exile. They found me in a manner as I understand quite like how Hedwin and the others found you. Back then, it was a smaller group than we have now. I joined an exile called Iriza and another known as Oralach. Hmm. Cool. Once in a while, we let little Tizo stand with us as well. He is rather older than he looks. The other triumvirates we stood against, they feared us. Only the tempers presented any threat to us in any given right. Hmm. But... There was a terrible accident. Eriza, we lost her. And Oralek, he was my friend. He... Oh, I think... Is this guy the... Is this guy the guy who turns into the demon? I think it is. He fell from Mount Elodiel. We lost him as well. On the night when he was to be free. We were reckless, hasty, 
and I was powerless to stop any of it. I blame the rights themselves, the circumstances that put us into danger. The downside has claimed many lives, yet this, it was too much. I vowed never again to don the mask and raiments. I had the black wagon cleared and buried such that it could not be used again. If the Nightwings would rise again, it would be under different circumstances, under new leadership and towards a different purpose. That is all I wish to say of this, my boy. How does he know the Lone Minstrel? That's Wolfred about his history with the Lone Minstrel, whom he seems to know quite well. Tariq was there with the, night, with the Nightwings when they took me on. His manner has always been much as how you see. Although he is somewhat more cheerful now than I recall back then, if you can believe that. I think our plan has sparked a little fire in him. He serves the rights and the night wings. I have tried to ask him of his past before, but he seems rather reluctant to speak of it. Though it is plain that he's not from around here. This being the downside, I respect his wishes for some privacy. Nonetheless, although I do know not know too much of him, I count him as a friend. I lost track of him for some time, though it is he who first informed me that the Nightwings had returned. He and Tizo were instrumental in our meeting. It's been good to see him doing relatively well, anyway. Was there anything else you wish to talk about for now? Excused. You thank Volford for his time and bid him a good rest of the afternoon. Likewise to you, reader. Be well. to glory. Hmm. <laughs> that like, it looks kind of like he's he's satisfied or something when I, when I tickle him. Everyone, the amenities we are modest here. The amenities are modest here in Moonlight Alcove, but I suggest that you get comfortable. We may be here for some time. As for myself, I have some business to attend to. Please leave the wagon in my care for now. It shall be ready by when you need it next. From the mountaintop, you can see all across the downside. It's impossible expanse staring back at you. The thought occurs to you that you may never see another land besides it. Mm. And so you and your companions wait upon the mountaintop in quiet solitude, anticipating when the cycle of the rites begins to turn again. Then you shall have another opportunity to free one of your own. You may earn back their freedom, one by one. Many moons pass. Then, one evening... May I have a moment, reader? The lone minstrel finds you poring over the Book of Rites, as has been your learning through your stay at, his ab at this abode. Begging your pardon, but there is something you may wish to see. Please, follow me. You follow him into the cold night. Look forth, reader, sir. The stars shine like you've never seen. One more, that once more the path towards salvation is revealed, but now something is different. The stars shine once more. Let's seek our destination. What? Whoa. How the midnight star? Jomir the dusk star? Malith the bog star? Each prior time you searched the stars, they showed you a single path, but now several rites avail themselves to you at once. Henceforth, you may choose from several different rites. Hmm. Interesting. 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 Okay, so we have options then. We've got the Bog Star, the Midnight Star. Uh, Cairn. Jomir, the Dusk Star. That was, like our, that was our first one, right? The Bog Star. Hmm, accusers, dissidents. Let's go, let's go to this one. Here we go. The stars urge that we go to the spring of Jomir, a long way off. Fulfred, sir, how are we to reach the spring of Jomir in due course of time? You know full well, Tariq. Preparations are complete. You think you see the lone minstrel smile, ever faintly, but cannot be sure. Please ask the others to gather their belongings, rest, and then assemble at the wagon there at dawn. We shall be departing at that time. As you will, sir. 
The cycle begins anew as the years advanced. You'll find there ought to be fewer rites this time until once more we are to traverse the scribe's gate. Okay. Exactly how many, it is difficult to say, but our next chance at liberty ought to present itself much sooner than before, so let's be ready for it. Now then, see you in the morning, reader. Okay. Companions have not traveled far from Moonlight Alcove. Word of the news soon spreads throughout the group. Let's do it. Next morning, Volfrey calls everyone together before the black wagon. This old wagon is more than it appears. It flies now, doesn't it? With Bertrude's aid, it escorted you across the sea to me. Now it shall escort us anywhere the stars require. Come and see. Let's go inside the wagon. Oh, it's an airship now. It's an airship. Something has changed about the wagon's interior. What looked before to be old cracks and signs of age now expose various intricate components once hidden from view. You are the night wings. You should travel in their customary way. Ooh, wings. He turns to you, indicating levers and devices marked with symbols from the book. Now, reader, whenever you're ready, you may take us up. I'll show you how. And everyone else, hang on to something. Oh boy. What? After having soared into the sky, the black wagon remains aloft somehow. <laughs> Tizo is excited to be flying again. You get the impression that this may not be the first time for him. Never thought I'd soar like this again. Oh, by the scribes. The Nightwings sail the skies again, wheresoever the stars may call for them. There is one catch. The downside provides few locales suitable for landing, though we should be able to find at least a couple landing places near where we're going. We'll, uh, we'll then make way by land or sea toward our destination. Now, without further ado, let us proceed. All right, let's go. All right. Oh, I see. Oh, I control it now. How very cool. Nice. Awesome. Shift to boost. Here we go. Oh, wait. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who is this? Chastity. Okay. Just keep going this way, I guess. Seeing something about the strange land you see below draws your attention. Best to avert your gaze from the Isle of Kylemir. Forgetting not unless the Deathless Tempest is significant to the eight scribes. Even the scribes themselves sought to avoid the place. Let us fly on. Oh, we're coming back here. Guaranteed. Guaranteed we are finding that again. Big Bertrude. Here we go. The spring of Jomir has always flown forth from the crushed carapace of Biolanthius, the legend of whose demise is a rather sordid tale. Perhaps you've already read it in the book. Hive Titan vanquished by the scribe Jomir, many main. Not all believe the book, book exists, of course, nor the greater titans, nor the rites. I have encountered exiles believing that this titan perished quite by accident rather than by a cunning trap laid by the Jomir many main. They took the titan for a common beast. Hmm. Perhaps the stars shine down upon out-of-the-way locales such as this one to ensure that they alone shall witness the proceedings. All right. Fall flat or glue hive. Wolford believes this should be an expedient path to the spring of Jomir. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go here. You touch down in the heart of Jomir Valley, where, where first you face the fate and the dissidents. You briefly wonder where they might be now and how they fare. You join your companions for a routine inspection of the wagon following its flight. Tizo confirms the wagon wheels withstood the shifting temperature and still appear to be in reasonable shape. Sir Gilman managed to calm some of the drive imps prone to dizziness or frenzy at high altitudes. Other than that, everything checks out, and the rest of the crew got through the flight without complaint. You now have a little time before you having to set forth by land. All right. Oh, the Beyonder Crystal Seeks Tizo. Okay. 
Um, first, I need to read the Book of Rights. I, once I too roamed free. I remember well those days in which I was called chief. I traveled all the world over on my four good paws, and I was well adored. I wanted to grow stronger. Here at last I have. I shall not mince my world. words. This place shall either harden you or kill you. It shall haunt you with old memories. You share the exile's plight. My charge is to alleviate the sting of it for you a little bit and to prolong your stay, but only for as long as needed. Your charge is to return. We call this place the downside for a reason, but in time, here you can learn to eat, to seek out shelter, and to find a certain beauty in unlikely places. Oh boy. All right, well, we'll read this. We'll read this later. Because it seems, it seems, uh, it seems we have a lot to read. I was beginning to wonder when you would return. You have invoked Sandra from the Beyond the Crystals. Request a scribe trial. Very well, hmm, let's consider among those idiots it's worth my limitless time. All right, Tizo. Tizo is the one. Wait, wait, wait. I see. Quickness. Uh, yeah, we'll go quickness. You ask Sandra to administer one of her special trials for Tizo. I dare think I remember something of that imp. He certainly stood out for all his ilk, from all his ilk, though I, that really is not saying much. Well, let us bring him forth. Tizo soon, soon appears in heed of the summons. Kirikiki! He's prepared. Whatever lies ahead. Or I should say, it is prepared. Maybe not he. Who knows? I certainly don't. Okay. The apparition Sandra appears and unfastens her mask. Listen well, Imp. You answer to me here. Kreehak! Chizo is indicating... Indicates his understanding and is prepared to begin Sandra's trial. You know the formalities, of course. Show me then that you have learned thus far from the rites. Here in this trial, it shall be just you, my beyonders, and your lovely reader. Let us see how you fare. Oh boy, they were they were banished within the rites. Okay. <laughs> Check it out. Check it out. Got it again. Tizo's pretty awesome. Oh, we couldn't get past him. Darn. got one. They got one. Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay. That was a that was a dumb mistake. I'll I'll admit it. I hit the button, but I, I apparently did not. Okay. Come on now. Got it. We got it. <sighs> I like Tizo. Tizo's good. Um, he does have a very long uh, respawn time. Cree hee cree. Worthwhile effort, Imp. Your performance was sufficient and you passed my test. Your predecessor may well have approved. Thus, congratulations are in order to you and your lovely reader. Now, farewell. Okay. These scribes are 
revered as folk heroes in the Commonwealth, though a few uh, there know the truth of their teachings. Hmm. If you know the truth, eh? Okay, what do we get? Cree! Yeah, what do we get? Take a closer look at the new artifact in your possession. Halb's wing, Tizof, Tito's flutter and zip abilities cost less stamina than usual. Wow. Awesome. That seems really good. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do... Oh wait, someone wants to talk to me, that's right. Sir Gilman. Sir Gilman is shivering there after the Black Wagon's maiden voyage through the skies. Mm. Master Rita, this sight is very, very slightly out of sorts is all. He merely appears terrified, but he assures you that this, his seeming cowardice is but an optical illusion in this case. Pamitha overhears and joins you. Flying's not for everyone, Sir Knight. This sight heartily concurs, though how anyone at all can stand it, he is yet to understand. Well, let's see. What's it like to swim the waters of the Sea Dominion? Ah, uh, those glorious murky waters, engulfed in hideous warfare to be sure, but otherwise a joy to cut across, to feel the coolness of the waves beneath one's gill slits and the like. Though this knight is now accustomed to his life above the surface. Flying's just the same, Sir Knight. It resists those of us not born to it. I, in turn, have wondered what your seas are like, but the thought of swimming fills me with disgust. Though I haven't had to swim, and you now have to fly. That's very brave of you, and you handled it better than some harp fledglings I've met in my day. You'll get used to it. She departs, but you sense Sir Gilman is feeling better after the exchange. Plus one hope. Nice. Exhibits a flagrant disregard for natural laws. Thus providing light entertainment. Where are you going? What? Hey. Come back. Oh, I drank some of Pamitha's moonshine. Oh, what's this? Singing sands. Screeching wheel mites. Awesome. Okay. Let us explore Gluhive. You end up spending part of your day with Ruki, exploring the, the area surrounding your wagon. You learn this used to be a swimming hole many years ago. I knew some curs used to go swimming around here. Did some horrible things to their coats. Your lasting memory of the place is standing by the shore, imagining the feel of the water. As you head back in silence, you consider which of your vocations to pursue. Um... Mentor a companion. Yeah, let's mentor someone. Let's see here. We'll mentor Jodella. Very well, for there is much to learn. Your knowledge of that book is vital to us all. You sit down with Jodero to go over some of your subtler, some of the subtler aspects of the rites, such as the state of banishment and how to return from it. You sense she's beginning to understand. Nine. Whoa, 1,000. That's a lot. My head is swimming with this talk of banishment. Enough of this for now. Okay, can we level up? Not yet. Okay. We need a thousand more. Let's continue our journey. Spring of Jomir. Barker and the Dissidents. Barker was tough, if I remember correctly. I mean, they're fast, right? So we've got to be wary of their speed. Oh, it's the slug market. Okay. There's more pages. Dang, we've got so many pages to read. Hey guys, come on in. Say, now, whatever happened to that smiley headwind guy? Did he really get out of here like I have been hearing, or what? We have no money. <laughs> headwind's power has to start with greater... Okay, it's only usable by headwind, so we sell it. Should we level, get some level up things? Longer to return. Yeah. 
scribe snuff. Oh, okay. Right light. Oh, oh, interesting. You know what? I think we'll save. Well, let's grab some of this stardust. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. We'll keep the rest. Tell all your friends about it because I already told mine. Okay. Rookie. You're gonna fight these guys now? You find Rookie having just put back his green tail family portrait. There's something of a wistful look in his eyes. Then something comes over him and he moves in close, lowering his voice. Look, chum, I gotta level with you about something here real quick. Truth is that I haven't been entirely upfront with you about my family's situation. He hesitates a while, then... We ain't exactly quite as rich as I've been letting on. I mean, we do just fine. We got lots of money stored away. It's just mostly locked up in saving bonds, and... He seems to catch himself in the middle of another tall tale and runs, relents before you can respond, one way or another. The situation is my mom back on the other side. She needs a little bit of help, financially and otherwise. All she's got now are my knuckle-headed uncles to keep us steady. I always told her I'd make something of myself, you know? I was just a clerk at her shop. Things started getting tough for us, so I started looking for all kinds of different work. Got in with some unseemly sorts, I guess, but the pay was real good. It took to shipping certain types of stuff down here, of all places, flushing it straight down the river, water tight. The pay was right. Mom was so proud of me. We were eating real good all the time. But you can probably guess what happened. I barely scraped by after they flushed me down here. Would have been food for a bunch of howlers had Jody not bailed me out of a tough spot one fine evening. As for my mom, she doesn't know the half of it. My uncles told her I'm away on business. Not entirely untrue, I guess, but if she knew, it'd break her poor heart. So, don't know how else to put this, chum, but I, I want to get out of here. Get back to what I was doing back home. On the straight and narrow, though. I'd go straight this time for sure. Just don't go telling everybody that old rookie Greentail's just a mama's boy, okay? I got a certain reputation to uphold. He quickly scampers out the door. His past has been weighty, heavily on he weighing heavily, heavily on him, but you sense he was sincere about wishing to lead an honest life. <laughs> okay, let's commence the right. Let's commence the right. And if we have time, maybe we'll read another passage. As the sky, as the sky grows dark over the spring of Jomir, a hush falls over your companions, especially Ruki. Hmm. You sense something tr is troubling him, something to do with your next adversaries. Oh, hey, chum. Just want to let you know, I'm pumped and ready to take on the dissidents this time. Sure am, all right. That Barker, he's not so scary once you get to know him like I do, you know? So don't you worry, because I sure won't be going easy on him after last time. As Rookie marches off towards the clearing, you notice his grin fade away. In the distance, you hear the distance begins to howl and hoot. I don't remember what, what voice did I use for the dissidents. Hmm. For Barker. Hopefully I'll remember. <laughs> Celestial Freedia. landmarks. Ever persevering, aren't we? Well then, rejoice. Because the cycle of the rites begins anew. Perhaps you'll liberate another soon enough. Hopefully. Your chosen adversaries here shall be the dissidents. Reduce their flame to ash, just as you did when last you met. Hope so. Now, who exactly shall oppose them? Oh, I'm excited. Oi, mates, look at what we got here. Greentail, is that you? Um, yeah, Buck, it's me, all right. Well, I'll be. So tell me something there, Greentail. You're gonna, gonna go against me this time and keep on slinking, stinking coward, being a stinking coward like before, huh? What do I do? 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 Wait, wait. He says he wants to fight. If you can beat him, if you can beat him, maybe. Maybe he'll leave us alone. Maybe he'll leave the Greentails alone. I can make it worth his while. Um, Barker. What is it, mate? The right's about to start. Well, I was just thinking, I know I owe you and everything, but I've got a deal for you. 
You like a good deal, don't you? Ah, <laughs> like I like a good laugh's more like it, but I'll bite Green Tail. What's your fancy here? I was thinking, if you can beat if I can beat you here, we're squared away. Squared away, you let me off the hook. Ha, huh. I see, I see. But tell me something, mate. Now why in this sticking world would I want to do a thing like that? What's in it for me when I beat you instead? Then I'll pay you double what I owe, I promise. But you have to promise too, Curtis Oath. Oi, really now? Double or nothing then, is it? Hey. You drive a hard bargain there, mate, but all right, it's a deal. You beat me in my pack right here, right now, and you're debt free as far as I'm concerned. Of course, if you don't, I'll be fleecing you for all you're worth. You, your stupid uncles, your dear old mama yours. See you shortly then. Rookie then turns to you. Hey, so this one means a lot to me, you understand there, chum? Let me go against these guys, and I'll make sure we show them up, okay? Let's do it. Let's do it! By the by there, mates, my pack and I, we've got a few new tricks we're dying to show you real soon. You sense Barker speaks the truth. The distants are more capable than before. Each time you face a triumvirate, they gain talisman and masteries. Hmm, do not underestimate them. Who shall conduct this right? Um... I think we'll... Obviously, Rookie is important. We gotta have Rookie. Um... Should we go Jodario? I think we'll go Jodario. And... Oh, she's unwilling. Huh. Hmm. Let's use... Let's use Day. We haven't used Day in a while. Day. The choice is cast. Rookie has always been so kind to me. If I help us, if I help us to prevail here, then maybe I can start to make it up to him. All right then, Greentail, bring it on, or it's your dear old mom who's gonna pay. Okay. Let's do this. Now begin. Yeah. Already does your adversary's flame yeah. To oh yeah. Oops. Alas, for day. What? Oh, what? You poor night oh no. You what the heck? Wide open. What's the matter, Green Tail? Methinks you seem a little nervous in your paws out there. Just shut up already, Barker. Let's get on with it. What's that you say, huh? You think you can talk back to me like that, Greentail? You heard me, Barker. Stay out of my way. Or what, mate? Or I'll sink these nervous little teeth into your neck, old chum. That foolish Barker was a menace to the Commonwealth and is a blight upon the rights. Whoops, whoops. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa! Dog on. No, 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 no! Alas. I, I, okay, I need to look at some of these controls here. I'm always forgetting how to switch left mouse button. I pushed that. I, I pushed that. But we'll we'll see. Your pyre shall soon be ashes on the ground. That cut of yours is banished. Got him. <laughs> okay. Nightwing's edge closer to victory. Oh, darn. We we jumped. Oh. 
I tried to I tried to shoot it. Yeah. Oh, this is intense, man. I can't lose. I can't lose. The orb is up. Oh, I tried to jump. Darn. What? No. <laughs> oh, come on. Yes. Come on, Rookie. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on, come on. Yes! Yes! <laughs> I can't believe we made it past these guys. Oh, that was intense. The Salas! That was intense, man. Good gracious. It's done. Woohoo! We did it! We got him! Yeah, Green Tail. You. You got us fair and square, mate. As fair and square as this stuff gets, right? Um, um so my family, you, you'll you leave them alone? You said you'd leave them alone. He's off there, Green Tail. A deal's a deal. Now then, me and my pack had better set it up for when we see you and your mates again. I'll be looking forward. Rookie watches him depart, then turns to you as his expression softens. Don't know how to tell you, chum, other than I really owe you one. Okay. Bask now in the wisdom of the scribes. Okay, she's got utter nonsense all of this. That we have to come this far. Fortune alone cannot be the cause. Alright, what do we got here? Shadira can banish the advertise by flinging the orb into them, or... I think I like... I think I like this route a little bit better. Rookie. Not quite. Nice. The eight scribes, they so inspire me. And now I feel that I have to, I've grown so much closer to them, maybe. So, grown somehow closer to them, not so much. Um, flings the orb faster and farther. They spreads and jumps without using stamina. Oh my, that's great. While sprinting, day slows nearby adversaries. Huh. I think I like this one. Without using stamina. We'll go this. We'll go for this one. A little bit for each of them. Very nice. Until the next. Until right. the next right. Okay. New souvenirs, souvenirs from your travels across the downside. Okay. You return to the wagon after you and your fellow exiles bested the dissidents and find Volford waiting for you there. Well done back there, my boy. You are serving your companions well. Now then, I have something that I wish to share with you if you've a moment. We have discussed the plan of which we are all a part. I have a means of measuring our progress towards the goal of it. I'd like for you to have a look at it. First, let's discover where, determine where the rights may take us next. Look forth, I expect you shall see several shining stars where once you saw but one. Let's look at the scribe stars, man. Let's take a look. Silver star. The azure star. The vernal star. Hmm. Several shining stars, a trick of the eye, or will, or the will of the scribes, who can say? I, too, once gained this newfound vision many years ago, following my first liberation rite, and I believe only we of the Nightwings have this gift. I realize that in choosing whom the Nightwings confront in each rite, we, in turn, influence 
which triumvirate we face when it comes time for someone to be set free. Hmm. The object I invite you to use contains further detail. Wolfred's planet to see your current progress. Okay, let's look upon him. Using Wolfred's plan planner, you may assess your progress towards your ultimate goal as well as check the current standings of your adversaries. Wolfred shall keep this information up to date for the remainder of your quest. You may look upon over it now or anytime in the Black Wagon or while searching the stars. <sighs> One more right required. Okay. Once known for their spirit and bravery, now a craven laughing laughing stock. Essence. Wow, we're the we're nine and zero. Oh. Holy cow! Prideful of having been prevailed more than all triumvirates combined. See, this guy looks like Ignarius. Looks like that guy that used to be part of the Nightwings. I'm wondering about that. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, ores, Lou the Vernal Star, or Triesta. Now let's go, let's go to the, to this one. Your next adversaries are to be the accusers, led by one called Lendel, whom I believe you first met many moons ago. His is a tale I hope shall be forgotten. He then tells you what he knows of your next adversary. Lendl the Liar, the first adversary you're confronted in the rites, not long after you took your first step on the path to freedom. A former constable in the Commonwealth, he gained a reputation for his strict and brutal manner. By any means, he always caught the crook. Once he arrested a civilian who hated him on suspicion of theft of Commonwealth artifacts that had gone missing. Lendl discovered the artifacts himself in the civilian's home. The suspect soon was exiled. Still, he denied the charges even as they cast him downriver. The case was investigated further, though, too late. Suspicions turned to Lendell. It turned out he planted the damning evidence himself, so he was exiled in turn. In the downside, he soon became acquainted with the rites, having heard all of this from several people in high places. He asserted himself as the de facto leader of the accusers. They bent to his aggressive nature and prevailed many times under his watch. Yet each time his chance at liberty arose, the Night Wings either defeated him or simply did not show. At any rate, Lendo shall be looking forward to our arrival, I expect. We may, we may resume our journey come daybreak, but in the meantime, I would advise taking what rest you can. We bid the lone minstrel a good evening. At dawn, you shall take flight again. All right. We will do this. Talk to Ruki. As you approach Ruki, you sense none of his usual anxious energy. I'm free. And he rushes up to you, a return to form. I mean... I know I'm not. I'm stuck down here all the rest, as all, with all the rest of you. It's just, it's like I finally got to set aside this giant bag of rocks I've been carrying around. You know what I mean? I wanted to say thanks, chum, for giving me a hand in the little situation between myself and Barker. I don't think I would have had it in me to stand up to him unless I knew you and the others had my back. Now at least old Mama Greentail won't get any trouble from him on the other side. She's still waiting for a rookie boy to come on home, but... At least you won't be getting hassled by a bunch of nasty cuz just because I struck a lousy deal. So yeah, chum, you ever need something, I owe you one. And then some. Cur's oath. He prances out of the wagon, a newfound lightness in his step. Plus two hope. Permanently. Fantastic. Wish him well. All right, well, friends, uh, we are going to... We are going to check on this later. Uh, I mean, come back soon. Eh, eh, eh. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll we'll read this later. We've got to end this episode here, friends. Thanks for watching. I hope you're doing very, very well. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. We'll play some more Pyre very shortly, I'm sure.